Hello, Indians fans, and welcome to another edition of the Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V here on the Indians Network. I'm Jamie Brockman, and uh, well, we've got some uh, a lot to talk about today. State wrestling, of course, uh, this past week wrapped up uh, Saturday night at Wells Fargo Arena. Uh, a lot of medals coming back to the local area. Uh, if you look around, like a uh, 30, 40 mile radius, uh, a lot of talent and a lot of uh, success at the state wrestling tournament this past week. So we'll be talking about that more in our wrestling segment with Oskaloosa coach Chase Weber. And of course, we'll discuss uh, Leland Evans, who was Oskaloosa state qualifier at 138 pounds. Girls basketball uh, on our end. The season is complete as Oskaloosa uh, was defeated by Pella in the opening round of the 4A regional tournament. Uh, we'll look back at that game and we'll talk with head coach JC White and uh, maybe uh, just kind of uh, talk a little bit about little Hawkeye conference teams and, and how they're faring here in the postseason as well. Uh, we'll talk boys basketball. Their postseason gets underway tomorrow on Monday night at home hosting Carlisle class three, a sub state opening round. And uh, we'll talk to assistant coach Nick Eversmeyer, who's joining us today. And uh, we'll, we'll break down that game and um, look at uh, how the Indians match up with uh, Carlisle for that game on Monday. And, uh, We'll also uh, take a look through uh, again and, and just highlight some of our place winners from around the area. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, bowling as well. Uh, bowling teams had some success uh, in their conference uh, tournaments, so we'll chat about that as well. So a lot to come this week on Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V. Don't go away. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk boys basketball, and we'll look at that matchup coming up Monday night with Oskaloosa and Carlisle as the postseason gets underway. Ivy's Choice Reserve and Prime Reserve Beef, arguably the best beef in America. Their quality and flavor are undisputable, undeniable. Let's get ready to be unstoppable! This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car, and you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call State Farm agent Wendell Campbell at 641-673-4462. Welcome back to this week's edition of Indians Corner Corner here on the uh, Indians Network, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V. Jamie Brockman, and uh, we're going to talk with uh, Oskaloosa assistant coach, one of the assistant coaches on the Oskaloosa boys basketball squad, uh, Nick Eversmeyer, is joining us. Coach, uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks for taking time away from practice to come join us. Appreciate you having me, Jamie. All right. Well, uh, the, it's, it's exciting time of the year. The postseason gets underway tomorrow on Monday. Obviously, we'll talk more about that and uh, break down the matchup with Carlisle. But let's go back to the end of the regular season last week. Uh, got a win over Grinnell to finish. Not such a good night uh, Monday night at Burlington. But just give me your thoughts on the, uh, the, the, you know, the closing games there of the regular season. You know, we started off, like you said, with Burlington on Monday. And uh, that's, a, that's a tough road trip. Um, coming out of a of a conference game, you kind of have an adrenaline dump after you 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 beat a, a really good conference opponent in Pella Christian, and then drive two hours down to Burlington um, for a, for a non conference game, um, and you know it's it's tough, especially with anticipation of a of a conference game. The very next night, you have to travel to Grinnell. Um, it was just kind of a a recipe for disaster and uh, we're looking to put games like that behind us and uh, take our best or take our next step forward moving on into the postseason so yes we want to put that behind us but as you look at the season uh, there were a few games that way some very lopsided scores not in our favor right. so as you diagnose that uh, what, what have you guys what have you as a coaching staff been able to kind of narrow in on and say hey this is this is something that needs addressed if we want to make a run to Wells Fargo Arena yeah, you know, I, I see. I think if you look at those games, we did not match the energy 
of our opponent. We every game we Coach Parker's talked about it since we started making a run. We made it to the sub state final and then a state tournament and then last year state championship. The target on our back has always gotten has gotten bigger throughout the years. And everybody gets up um, for us and everybody wants wants to knock us off and that's that's understandable. And I think that when we don't match that level, that everybody's going to give us their best effort, and and to be, that's to be expected. That's the way it's been for a while. And if we don't match that effort, night in and night out, uh, we're gonna we're gonna be in trouble. Well, uh, we did match that effort uh, in on. Uh Tuesday night at Grinnell uh, got a nice win there um, and you know Grinnell's a team that really kind of went on a downhill slide quickly uh, the second half of this season but we went to their gym and we just got off to a, a lightning fast start I think it was seven minutes before they even scored and only nine points on the board for them at halftime I think our biggest thing is there you you said it too we did match that effort we we I think we had something to prove going into that game because of what happened earlier in the year and uh we matched their energy. I thought I thought we, for the first time in a while, we really out efforted a team, got stops early, and uh, put us put us in a good position going going into the game, or going into the second half. So, again, we matched their effort. We we really came out focused defensively, trying to get stops, and and that's what kind of team we are. If we come out and we play as hard as we can, we don't hunt shots we don't hunt outside shots we shoot a lot of three-point baskets as a team a lot of three-point attempts and if we don't go out there and hunt those baskets we let those come to us we're a lot better off for it absolutely we're talking with nick eversmeyer he's uh, one of the assistant coaches on the oscaloosa boys basketball squad and uh successful into the regular season you've had or you have six full days from that game to the time you tip off on monday night against carlisle so uh, obviously effort has been a major focus of yours, I'm sure, and you've been pounding that into the players' heads. What other things have you been working on in practice uh, to get ready for the postseason? Um, I think one thing is execution, execution of the offense, um, doing what we do. Not we, we have a lot of kind of continuation sets where it's not always going to be there on the first, second, third pass. We're really looking to make the defense play uh, – Play defense for extended amounts of time, and then and then looking to get good opportunities from there. So ex- execution's big, and Coach Park. That's one of the three E's. Coach Parker always talks about energy, effort, execution. If you can have, play with a lot of energy, you know, a lot of effort, getting getting those. Uh, 50-50 balls, we call them, balls on the floor, go get them, go get 50-50 rebounds, and you execute, you're, you're going to be in any game that you play. Well, uh, what – uh, we eight and thirteen, I believe, is our record, yeah, and uh, going into the postseason. And some people might look at that and say, "Wow, you know," and, and not expect much out of us in the postseason. But we're going to be a dangerous eight and thirteen team. Uh, everybody's healthy now. The full coaching staff is there, and you know, I mean, that gets overlooked a little bit. Uh, half of our season, we either didn't have our coach, or you know, somebody was out ill or injured, and yeah. and so finally, we've kind of got everybody in place. We've we've been forced to face a lot more adversity than we have in the past with not only with coach Parker being out for an extended period of time and and Xavier Foster being out for an extended period of time we've had seen a lot of lineup changes a uh, flu bug that ran rampant through there were days where you didn't know who was going to be at school and who wasn't mm-hmm. and uh, to to get out of that and and being optimistic going into the postseason that's a that's a big thing but just having all those pieces coming together at the right time I think that's what any team really wants and and we've had a lot of distractions throughout throughout the whole year way more than we've had since I've been on the staff and way more than any coach would any coaching staff or team would want so uh, just seeing these guys the guys come to practice every day wanting to work hard wanting to get in there and uh, really execute the game plan at the end of the day is is huge so in the end uh, it could be a really good thing because uh, and so give me your opinion on this I mean guys had to step up and play different roles uh, so one game now you're all of a sudden the leader and then now you're more of a role player and uh, and then the coaches too I mean you know coach uh, uh, Foster had to step up and, and be a head coach uh, you guys as assistants had to kind of pick up things that maybe mm-hmm. you don't normally have to do on the bench so in the end does that kind of help everybody that you've played so many different roles this year I think so and I I, th- I think it definitely does I mean 
if you just look at it with with coach foster you know at the start of this year he didn't anticipate having to take over that role we have a lot of guys who at the drop of a hat their role changed and being ready being flexible and and be, being ready to do anything to help the team is is major and i think that we've had a lot of guys step up uh noah van veldheisen has stepped up and in, into that into that role Isaac Schultz, you know, Keaton Flaherty at times, Reese Sarver at times. We guys that we're constantly finding guys that during those games can be a spark plug for us. And I think that experience and, and those experiences moving forward will only help us. Yeah, and, and you probably have your core of seven, maybe eight players that you kind of, you know, make into your game plan, if you will. But but uh, we had to go deeper than that. Uh, we had yep. to go, you know, 10 deep right. sometimes. Yep. And, and so so guys are going to be ready to go, and they're going to be a little more confident uh, because they did get some playing time Absolutely. during the year. So uh, we'll see how that rolls in the postseason. So um, that starts on – well, you, you talked about Noah Van Veldheisen, just to update people. I mean, he's averaging 21 points a game the last two games. Uh, he has 11 three-pointers in the last two games between Burlington and Grinnell. He is on fire. Are you seeing that continue in the gym in practice? Oh, yeah. He's like uh, Friday during practice. He'd get he'd get open looks. We'd be running our stuff. We would create open looks for him to to the point where he doesn't have to go hunt those shots. And when when he's catching in rhythm, there's it's it's hard to find a better shooter in the gym. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's uh, let's focus on the postseason now. It gets underway on Monday at home. I mean, we're fortunate that we get our first two rounds at home uh, as the number two seed in this district. Uh, and Carlisle's our opponent, and we're. Uh, you know, similar records, eight and 12. But when you look at competition played, not even a contest there. I mean, we're in the little Hawkeye Conference. They're in the Raccoon River. Uh, there, there's some good teams in the Raccoon River, obviously, Carroll and, you know, that uh, some teams that have state tournament experience. But little Hawkeye, it's tough to find anybody uh, in 3A, especially, that matches up with our competition. So that, that's got to be a, a plus for us. And Coach Parker always says, you know, there's no nights off in the little Hawkeye. Even the teams, you know, if, if, you, look at, if you look at us this year, if you look statistically, we're at the bottom of the Little Hawkeye this year. But any team can beat anybody. And it's it showed that year in and year out since since I've been here that, you know, it's those those experience you look at like a Pella Christian, a two A team that comes in and they're playing night in, night out, you know, and that can only help them in the postseason. And I think the adversity and the experiences that we've had through the cons we've played really good teams, tough, even at our lowest points this year. So um, those, those experiences with our conference are only going to help us moving forward. All right. Well, let's dig into the scouting report on Carlisle now. Uh, I know, um, you know, first, I mean, we're not playing in their $5 million gym, which is pretty, pretty uh, spectacular. Really, really if you haven't nice. seen it yet. Yeah, we, we saw it on film. It's beautiful. <laughs> but uh, they come in 8 and 12. Uh, they average 48 points a game, uh, about 16 turnovers a game. Fairly similar to us in those numbers. Looks like they have, uh, you know, three scores Norton, Amos, and, and Guard. So uh, what have you guys found out about those players and, and how do we. Uh, how do we match up with him? Uh, Norton, he's he's really their their scoring threat. He can he can score from any anywhere on the floor. He can really shoot it. He can get to the rim. He can facilitate for some of those guys. So he he can really score from anywhere, and that's that's going to be a point of emphasis to really stay on him and not have him. I mean, just go off on us. Um, Amos is a big body. He uh, you and I commit in football. Big body guy, kind of reminds you on film of uh, Tyler Andres from last year from from Norwalk, and uh, sets sets really good ball screens. He and they look to get him the ball as they're driving into the lane. They try to pull you away from him, and they'll dump, and he can really finish at the rim. And then guard, uh, we were talking today b before I came, and he he's really their facilitator. He can he can get there, get them into stuff. He can also dribble, drive, and score. He can, he's a real quick, shifty guard who they look to as almost like a comfort. If, if things are going wrong, they'll get him the ball, have him pull stuff out, and, and really get it, facilitate their offense. Defensively, what do they throw at you? Uh, we, I, I think we can expect to see some zone, some zone and some man. Um, I think that they want, like most teams, will want to keep, keep the ball out of the middle of the lane. And, uh, you know, as 
with a with a seven footer in the middle. We 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 look to to get the ball to him in the lane and then facilitate the offense from there and and really run our stuff. We we say you know we're really focused on us. We we focus on what we do and it's. I think we're really hard to guard if if we execute well, but we're really not hard to guard if we don't. And so they don't. We don't expect a ton of pressure, but they play really, really hard. They go get defensive rebounds. So if we don't, if we don't get a body on somebody, um, it's going to be really hard to rebound against this team. They get a ton of rebounds. Yeah, the average. Uh, I didn't write down the rebounds per game, but I, I want to say it's about thirty-five or so yeah, per they, game. So they get after it. Uh, we haven't played Carlisle for a couple of years. Last matchup was two years ago uh, at Southeast Polk in the uh, sub-state game to go to state uh, last time, and, and they gave us a run early, and then we were able to pull away later. Obviously, these are two different teams now, but uh, the matchup is Monday night, seven o'clock tip-off at Oskaloosa High School gym. So, um, again, your message to the team going in: effort and uh, execution yep energy effort and execution and uh if we if you can take care of all those things and those are all things that you control we always talk about things that you can control and it's it's those three things energy effort and execution if you're if we don't have to coach up energy effort and execution we can really look at those fine-tuning things we'll, we'll be in good shape but if we're constantly after having to preach energy we're having to draw up plays every time out that's that's when we s sort of sputter and i think the last two days of practice have shown us that we're really we're we're ready to go all right well that's good to hear and uh, uh hopefully it's exciting to watch a big run coming up trying to get back to wells fargo arena in des moines for the third straight season and uh, defend our championship from a year ago uh, it's been an up and down season there's been bumps and bruises but you throw all that out the window brand new season starts monday absolutely all right, Co Coach Eversmeyer, thanks for coming in and making appreciate time. We appreciate it. it. And uh, go get Carlisle Monday. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, Oskaloosa hosting Carlisle Monday night to open up the postseason. And uh, you'll be able to watch. If you can't make it, you'll be able to watch it right here on the Indians Network. Uh, our pregame will be at 640, and tip-off is 7 o'clock Monday night from the Oski Gym. And even if you do go to the gym, you can go home and you can watch it on demand on the Indians Network as well. Uh, that is Nick Eversmeyer. He's the assist one of the assistants on the Oskaloosa Boys Squad. We'll take a break here on the Indians Corner. We'll be back. We'll talk girls basketball and uh, look back at the season with head coach J.C. White coming up. In Oskaloosa, see your good neighbor State Farm agent, Wendell Campbell, for your insurance and financial needs. You're sure to save big at Hy-Vee now that hundreds of items are on low price lockdown and price decline. Lockdown prices won't change unless they are lowered and any item marked with a red arrow means you will save big. Come get deals on seasonal items already on your list at Hy-Vee, where there is a helpful smile in every aisle. Swing. I'd get it one piece at a time, and it wouldn't cost me a dime. You mind your own business. Mind your own business. Body in town. No crazy over you. Thunder Country. For me, it was an easy switch to, to pick MCG. As a content creator, I need to have like a reliable service. My previous service was totally unreliable. The, the connection to the internet was horrible. Um, it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. Uh, there were days where you would try to get online and your service wasn't available. Or the kids wanted to watch something and it wouldn't load and wouldn't load and wouldn't <laughs> load because that's all we have is Netflix and Hulu and we're so much happier <laughs> with MCG. The service has always been reliable uh, since day one. It was just kind of a no-brainer. Hy-Vee's Choice Reserve and Prime Reserve Beef, arguably the best beef in America. Their quality and flavor are undisputable, undeniable. Let's get ready to be unstoppable! And the winner by unanimous decision, Oskaloosa, it's our community. 
and we're thankful to be a part of it. Telling its stories, sharing its smiles. We're building community, keeping you informed, giving you a voice, letting you know you're never alone during the victories and the losses, happiness and pain. For tomorrow's a new day, and we'll be there working for you, ready to tell your story. That's our commitment. It's what we do, now and in the future. Because we're always on. We're Oskaloosa News. This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car, and you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call State Farm agent Wendell Campbell at 641-673-4462. Welcome back to Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V here on the Indians Network. My name is Jamie Brockman. We're going to uh, transition and talk girls basketball now. And, uh, you know, you go from the excitement of starting a second season, talking with Coach Eversmeyer, to uh, the end of a season uh, that happened last week for Oskaloosa girls basketball, as uh, unfortunately we fell to Pella opening round of the 4A regional tournament. Coach White, thanks for coming in again. Good to see you. Yeah, as always. Uh, well, uh, kind of. Uh, a good start to the game, I guess, at Pella, but then it, it got out of hand pretty quickly there in the second quarter. But, uh, you know, the game started out exactly how we would want it. Low scoring. Uh, it was 5-4 to four after one quarter we led. And uh, uh, that's exactly the type of game we wanted to play. And it continued mid-second quarter and then, then kind of changed. Yeah, it kind of got away from us defensively. We were executing. Um, we were coming down doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, Pella went on a few little runs there, kind of going into the going into halftime, and uh, we just kind of came out um, a little bit flat second half. I would say defensively, um, weren't really communicating well. We still played hard, we did some great things, but we it kind of just got away from us on the defensive end. Yeah, and, uh, started uh, kind of went back to turnovers, things like that, which is an area that we had improved so much on, uh, especially the last couple of weeks of the regular season. So, um, season comes to an end, and uh, one in twenty was our final season record, and uh, that, you know we got that season opening win at Centerville, and then uh, basically twenty straight losses. But um, there were some good moments throughout that 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 streak there. Um, Let's talk about that. Let, you know, the season's over and, and we lost to Pella, so we'll just we'll just go back and reflect <laughs> instead. So let's talk about the season and uh, some of the ups that we had. Um, and some of those ups would be one. Let's talk about uh, the ability to break the press. They really, really improved on that as the year went on. Yeah, that's been something we've been working on for a couple of years now. Um, you know, Presley Blommers was a huge part of that. She sees the floor really well. Um, we've had to put, you know, Macy was playing some point guard. We had McKenna Schaffner playing some point guard and girls that are more comfortable at like a shooting guard spot than the point guard spot. And so we we're having to force people into roles that maybe weren't their strengths. And so putting Presley in that role allowed us to put the girls that needed to be at the two, at the three um, position wise into those. And then everyone is just more comfortable when they get to play within their skill set. Um, and so we just got more comfortable, you know, my first year here coaching, we would stop a press break and we'd walk through it and show them where to go and show them where to rotate. And it just has been a lot more natural for us this year of finding openings. Not that it was ever perfect, but you know, we, we made adjustments, um, you know, at halftime, we made adjustments at quarters and timeouts and could make adjustments with our press break. Whereas we haven't been able to do that in the past. Uh, other pluses, let's talk about the development of your young players um, that are the future of this program. And, you know, as the season went on, you, you went deeper and deeper and deeper into your bench. And I, I think we had, what, 10 players probably playing on a pretty regular basis getting minutes. So that's good for the future. So talk about the development of those younger girls. Yeah, you know, we are always having to look big picture. 
Um, some of those younger girls probably could have come in and played some minutes at the start of the year, but you know I I didn't feel like that would help them develop. And so we're trying to play the end game and getting them some JV minutes, getting them some confidence at that level will allow them to be better players at the varsity level. And so I know sometimes from an outsider's standpoint, it's like, well, why aren't those girls playing? They, they give great minutes and yeah, they really do, but uh, you can only play six quarters a night. So we're limited on quarters with those girls. And for them at the start of the season, JV is the minutes they needed to develop at, against opponents that are at their level. And so then you saw the, the fruits of that labor, you know, later against those varsity teams. You know, Aubrey Blanco was one where we've been trying to toughen her up and get her to varsity basketball. And she came in and gave us solid minutes mm -hmm. consistently. You know, Addie Carter, she's just a tiny little thing in there. And so depending on the team, but she, she may can or shoot, though. <laughs> she can shoot, but, you know, she's undersized against a lot of teams. So we have to put her in positions, put her in roles that can help make her successful. I mean, Presley, we've talked about. Um, Lucy Roach comes in and gives quality minutes. Gracie Flaherty, she's going to be a great shooter. She attacks well when she plays hard. You know, there's there's so many girls coming up that are going to just improve this program every year. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about uh, your seniors now. Um, obviously, uh, their career came to an end, and and you know, and, and I've said it on the air many times. I mean, it it, it certainly was not a. Uh, uh, all fun four years for these girls. Uh, there's a lot of bumps in the roads and, and not many wins in that four-year time, but they stuck with it and 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 they 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 you know and they made things happen and they're part of this improvement. So uh, I I tip my hat to them and say good job and and we appreciate their effort and their commitment to the program. But talk about the seniors and what they've meant to you. Yeah, you know um, Mary is the obvious one that had minutes um, and was a huge part of our team offensively, defensively. She really came on strong after coming off of a ACL injury, not playing her junior year. Um, and you know she's she's a great leader by example. Um, and then with Ashley and Brooke, you know they didn't get to play as glorified role. They aren't necessarily someone that's leading us on a stat line, but. You know, Brooke was one of our practice players, and she's on those girls every day in practice. And and I I told her after the game, you know, Ashley Smith was Ashley Smith was battling injury and stuff at the end of the season, so we didn't get to see her late in the season, um, in games so much. But you know, I talked to Brooke like, don't ever don't ever let that role be diminished because you're someone that makes those girls better. That you're not ne she's not necessarily the one that sees that. Um, the the glory of the stat line which isn't necessarily what it's always about but she was a big part of you know pushing through and and um, dealing with adversity and different things and so her and Ashley both played that same role um, when Ashley was there you know early in the season and it's it's not to be a <laughs> it's not a diminished role that it's not necessarily about the stat line for them so they've done a lot for us yeah every team has to have players like that 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 are the the ones that push the players in practice and get them ready uh for what they're going to see in the games and and those players uh you know again they don't get all the, the the interviews and the spotlight but uh teams wouldn't be able to do what they do without players like that uh on the squad so again i salute all our seniors and uh, thank them for their commitment their hard work and their dedication to the program and uh, and best of luck to all of them uh in the future uh, wherever they wherever they end up um, so, uh, as you look back at the season, then, uh, obviously we talked about the development of the young players. We talked about some of the improvements in the press break and things like that. What are other things that stick with you, um, from this season, whether, you know, that there were, there were positives, you know, we battled a lot of adversity behind the scenes that a lot of people probably didn't recognize. Um, I'm just proud of the girls for sticking through it. You know, stuff that stuff that's going on behind the scenes that, you know, isn't, isn't ideal, isn't something, you know, basketball related. And you know, we came back after dealing with that, and we still fought hard. You know, our second half of our season was, I told him it's the best basketball we've been playing. And so to, to peak at the right time and play our best basketball going into postseason was exciting for me. Um, you know, when we're playing Indianola and Grinnell late in the season, we're playing them up to the last three minutes, four minutes of the game. That says a lot about those girls. You know, they play hard for four quarters. They never give up, um, and they're always fighting hard. Yeah, yeah, because those were thirty point losses earlier in the season. So, uh, big turnaround there. Do you feel like the message gets through to the girls? Do you feel like they feel like they accomplished things this year and and that the future is bright? Yeah, I think so. I think um, there was, you know, even after those tough losses against Grinnell and Indianola, where we're right there, 
Um, I think it was very obvious from a basketball standpoint how much those girls are capable of. And, you know, I've been saying it to them for three years that it's not about the scoreboard. It's not about the scoreboard. Don't, don't count our success by the scoreboard because that's just not where we're at. And so I think to finally see that in a game where the scoreboard was a little bit closer and we're starting to see some of that, I think, I think those girls are starting to see the, the work that they've put in and the development we've made as a team on the scoreboard. Now, it wasn't necessarily ending in our favor, but I think, you know, next year they're going to win some games and they're going to see that and, and continue to grow from there. Of course, it all starts with what? Off-season work, right? And uh, that's what they need to do. And we've talked about it over and over. Um, it doesn't mean hours and hours and hours every single day, but just a little bit here, a little bit there in the off-season, uh, uh, maybe some five-on-five five, if you can get the opportunity, things like that, just shooting the basketball. I mean, those are things that are going to build this program. Yeah, you know, last summer I was in the gym four times a week, sometimes five, opening it up. You know, we've got our lifting program going on. Um, on Wednesdays, I open it up, send it out to girls. Hey, top 64 is going on in Pell. Let's put a team together. And we had um, six or seven girls there. Um, I, I challenged them after we had our team camp at the beginning of the season. I gave individual workouts. And, you know, some of them can't always make it into the gym in that morning spot. You know, some of them have jobs. Some of them are playing softball. But I give them an indiv individual workout so that they can go do it on their own. You know, and just, just put time in in the gym. It doesn't have to be with the team, but just time with a ball in your hands makes a huge difference come the start of the season in November. Um, and so I just hope they continue to take those opportunities in the summer to grow. I put out the challenge last year. It was, I think I did the math. It was 150 makes a day three times a week after camp until the 1st of August, and it ended up being 3,000 makes. And I put that challenge out, and I said, hey, I'll get you some kind of T-shirt or something. And so I had a couple girls meet that challenge, and the goal would be that every year we up that. I would love to see 10,000 makes a summer. I mean, when I, when I was a high school player, that was the goal, 10,000 makes a summer. And so I'd love to see the 10,000 make club um, get going here in Oskaloosa. Absolutely. That would be cool. All right. Well, um, let's talk about the Little Hawkeye Conference now in postseason. We were just talking uh, during the break. Um, Best of my knowledge, as far as looking at results, uh, well, Pella, by the way, Pella lost at Clear Creek Amana Saturday night, uh, so Pella is eliminated. And then uh, it looks like the only team left going right now is DCG. They got a bye in the opening round. Uh, they won the semifinal, so they're playing to go to state on Tuesday against Lewis Central. Um, and, of course, you know, we'll, we'll cheer on DCG because we want our conference to do well uh, when, when we're not playing them. <laughs> but uh, um, are you at all surprised uh, at any of the results uh, with any of our conference teams and, and, and how it's played out? Um, no, not really. I mean, you know, some of our conference teams can surprise us. Uh, you know, Marion is probably, you know, Marion Clear Creek Amanda, that's a tough matchup. And so um, Pella to come out that side would be tough for them. Um, I'd say Dallas Center has as good a chance of anybody. You know, they're, they're really deep with athletes. Um, Indianola is one that those girls are so young, but they're playing up a class. And so they, they play all of us teams that are 4A, but it's a little bit tougher in a bigger class. So they, they probably run into a lot tougher teams in a bigger class. Um, you know, it's always good to see people in your conference competing at state. So I hope DCG gets through Lewis Central. Yeah, that's Tuesday night if anybody wants to uh, uh, find a way to watch it or, or go check it out in person. So, um, all right. Well, uh, I guess, you know, that's all the questions I have for this week. But we will get you in at least one more time, and, and we'll, we'll go through postseason accolades because gonna, there's going to be some postseason awards. Uh, there's going to be some girls' honorable mention all-conference. Maybe we can sneak one in uh, to an all-conference, you know, first, second, third team, something along that line. Um, there's going to be some academic awards, things like that. So uh, if you could come back and, and update us on that here uh, in the coming weeks, we'd appreciate it. But uh, congratulations. You know, uh, again, 1-20 in 20 season, and people may look at that and say, wow. But – for those of us that watch the program on a weekly, nightly basis, uh, the improvement is certainly there and, and, and noticed. So congratulations to you and your coaching staff on that. Uh, congratulations to the girls. Keep up the work. Work over the summer. And, and uh, let's go get some wins next, next winter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, JC, thanks for your time again. And uh, uh, we'll catch up soon. All right, thanks, Jamie. All right, that's JC White. She's the head girls basketball coach at Oskaloosa High School joining us here on this week's edition of the Indians Corner presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm in Oskaloosa High V. Take a break. We'll be back, and uh, we got a lot to talk about when it comes to wrestling. I don't know if you knew, but there was a big event that just took place last week, and uh, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk Oskaloosa wrestling with Coach Chase Weber straight ahead. Don't go away. Hi, 
Ivy's Choice Reserve and Prime Reserve Beef. Arguably the best beef in America. Their quality and flavor are undisputable, undeniable. Let's get ready to be unstoppable! is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car, and you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call State Farm agent Wendell Campbell at 641-673-4462. Finding an internet provider can be tough. Long-term contracts, data caps, slowdowns, and unresponsive customer service can get in the way of what you really want. Fast, reliable internet. At MCG, we've removed everything that stands between you and your connection, allowing you to focus on what's important. No contracts, no data caps, no slowdowns, and no robots answering our phones. Just real people delivering really fast internet. MCG, world-class service, small town value. I'd get it one piece at a time, and it wouldn't cost me a dime. You mind your own business. Mind your own business. Everybody in town knows I'm crazy over you. Oskaloosa. It's our community, and we're thankful to be a part of it. Telling its stories, sharing its smiles, we're building community, keeping you informed, giving you a voice, letting you know you're never alone during the victories and the losses, happiness and pain. For tomorrow's a new day, then we'll be there, working for you, ready to tell your story. That's our commitment. It's what we do, now and in the future. Because we're always on. We're Oskaloosa News. Mahaska Communication Group sees it as their mission to serve Oskaloosa and the surrounding communities. Whether it's by offering the best communication services, helping make Central Iowa a better place to live, or by simply providing solutions when no one else will. MCG operates with an understanding. Reliable, high-speed internet is a must for communities to thrive. By providing world-class service, MCG is helping to build communities where people want to live, work, and play. All right, welcome back to Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V here on the Indians Network, presented by Craig Ford. Well, you'd think maybe I had my fill of wrestling the last uh, three, four days, but nope. <laughs> We're going to talk more about it today and and go back and, and relive some of the moments from Wells Fargo Arena this past week. But tell you what, uh, I was uh, blessed and honored to be part of the uh, Thunder Country broadcast team at Wells Fargo Arena this year for state wrestling. They do a fantastic job, have for years. Uh, we had eight, nine people working on our broadcast and uh, uh, usually I'm up three stories high in the suite uh, broadcasting or doing reports but this year uh, I was down on the floor and uh, all sessions I tell you what whew, I was wore out, but I got to see a lot of great things uh, and see a lot of things I don't normally get to see under the tunnel. Uh, guys coming off the mat after wins, guys coming off the, off the mat after losses. Um, it, it, was, it was a pleasure, but a uh, great job and, and I just want to point out a few highlights that occurred uh, from our area, 
Uh, one, congratulations to uh, Centerville and Eddieville, Blakesburg, Fremont. Uh, they had five guys in the finals combined. Uh, Centerville uh, came out with two champions. Of course, Matthew Lewis is a three-timer. He has a chance to join the four-time club next year if he can uh, win it his senior year. And uh, also, uh, Cody Kozlerich got a championship. And then, uh, boy, you got a feel for uh, uh, Gino Bana. <laughs> Three years in the finals and still looking for a championship. He came up short last night with a runner-up, but still a, a great effort. Uh, Eddieville, Blakesburg, Fremont, Tristan Sales uh, lost in the finals. Finished second in his first trip there. He's a junior. And then uh, congratulations, Sage Walker, finally finishing that journey with a state championship in his senior year uh, for Eddieville, Blakesburg, Fremont. Congratulations to him. But a lot of good uh, representation from our area. Um, one big highlight of the night, of course, was uh, Kale Happel from Lisbon, four-time champion, became the 28th member of the uh, Iowa all-time four-time uh, champion club. So that was interesting and fun to watch. And then I got the chance to interview him under the tunnel, and that was that was kind of cool for me too. So... Anyway, um, uh, Don Bosco, the 1A champion, Osage, the 2A champs, and Waverly Shellrock, the 3A champs. And we're going to talk more about that as we go, but we're going to bring in uh, Oskaloosa coach Chase Weber now. And obviously, uh, Oskaloosa had representation on the mats at Wells Fargo Arena as well this week with Leland Evans at 138 pounds in Class 3A. And man, just missed uh getting into the medal round uh coach he wrestled really hard um and uh he went uh he went uh, uh one and two at the tournament but his two losses were about one point each and i believe they both medaled if i uh and so that's a credit to to leland yeah yes they both medaled um like i said he wrestled really hard i mean by far probably the most solid wrestling he's ever had in his his life to this point as everything gets harder every year and for him to step up, you know, making it here was one. And then that first round, we knew we could keep it close just we knew his skill sets. And we scouted a little bit on what the guy liked to do. And we really, really shut him down as far as him scoring points. And we didn't let him get to the edge. And we, we did everything we were supposed to do. It was just that we were missing one takedown, missing one point. So other than that, he really did do good. You know, that was Xavier first round. He ended up placing, I want to say, fourth. I believe he, he got he got to the third and fourth place match and lost. And then when we beat Fort Madison, it was real handedly. And we gave it takedown right away, but got out and ended up winning seven to two. I mean in hindsight it should have been more of like a seven to nothing type of match. We controlled him the whole time and did really well, looked good, and then that blood round trying to get to the medal stand, same situation. We knew we had a tough opponent coming up and we thought him coming in was gonna be a real funky kind of kid and we did still we shut him down. We kept things in our control. We kept it winnable, everything we were supposed to do. And we even got close to a leg at the end. We just had one arm instead of two. And, you know, just being that close makes things kind of sting a little. But at the same time, I told him, you know, you're, you're top 12 in the state, class 3A. Be proud of it. Use it for next year. Absolutely. I thought there could have been maybe a stall call there uh, in – the end there because Leland was aggressive. He was the one shooting. He was going after him, going after him, after him. The other guy was on the defense, obviously not wanting to give up the takedown and lose the match, which is understandable. But uh, never got that stall call, unfortunately. And uh, and Leland just kept going, going, and came up just short. Yeah, you know, and it's it's not that we did anything less active in the beginning. It's just that guy was would dive in just ever so often to keep the ref off his back. You know, it. That's his tactic. That's within the rules, so we can't complain a lot. But, yeah, we would have loved to see maybe tie it up, give us a chance, and we just got to keep pressure on and open up more. And we talked to him right away after, and he already had questions saying, man, I could have done this. Like, yeah, that's a yeah. good idea. There you go. Well, Leland is just a, a, a great kid. He is. And if you talk to anybody that knows him, teachers, parents, uh, students, you know, friends, teammates, uh, everybody has nothing but good to say about Leland Evans. And I've known him since he was probably in third grade and uh, just a, just a great kid. And I'm glad to see him have this success. Very humble. Uh, he even did an interview with me after he was eliminated from the tournament. I gave him time to sit and relax and, and kind of soak it in. And then he was humble enough to get up and, and, uh, and give us an interview, which I thought was fantastic. But um, I want to know, uh, from the inside, what goes on with you guys, you know, after Leland loses that first match? So now you're facing elimination right off the bat. You know, you're, you're at the, you're at as high level as you can be going into the state tournament for that first match. You lose. Now you're facing elimination like an hour later. So how, how, tell me about that process to get him ready for that second match. Well, going into the tournament, you know, we try to stay as positive as we can. We don't want to talk about the what if you lose. We try to keep him on the positive side saying this is how we're going to win. But there is a little bit of talk of the what if, and, you know, and obviously the kids know 
know the weight of the situation of losing. So we had we had done enough background check on the next guy potentially, and and right after the match happens, you know, we go talk to him just real quick, and then try to get their head right about hey, okay, go get some liquids. You need anything to eat? You know, we're gonna be back up in an hour, so we need to make sure we get a little rest, get off your feet, and then, you know, when the, these certain weights start going, you got to get back up. You know, we had a workout partner with them, so then we could make sure we could get his feet moving again and be ready for that match because, like you said, we can't go. We don't want to go 2 and give ourselves a chance. Yeah, and he came back big, as you said, with a 7-2 to two win there uh, in the, uh, the, the first-round constellation. That got him through to Friday, and then he uh, unfortunately suffered that one-point loss. Had he won that, would have moved into the, uh, the round of medals and, and, and been in the top eight and, and just came up short. But um, how did Leland feel afterwards? Like, after it all soaked in, after he showered, got ready, went and ate, you know, the rest of the day, uh, Friday, Saturday, what, what, what was his mindset? How did he feel about his accomplishments? You mentioned him being pretty humble. He's, he understands what's going on, and he's never too high or never too low. So he kind of sits in that middle. Now, you know, going forward, maybe we want him to get him a little more higher up on some of those situations. But he's very humble in that. So coming off the mat and then, you know, getting ready for matches, he, he knows what's happening. Um, for him to prepare for that final match, we knew we had to do, you know, certain things and just – it, he did a really good job of managing his emotions and then really focusing just for the three days that you're there with all the distractions. Yeah, a lot of distractions. I don't know how the guys do it. But um, another thing, you know, it's good. I mean, when you go to the state wrestling tournament as a wrestling fan, you just leave there energized. I mean, the energy, the the atmosphere, and you just it just reminds you that wrestling is still top notch in the state of Iowa uh, and maybe you kind of forget that or overlook it during the year but man uh, state wrestling just energizes you so what does that do for the rest of your team having Leland go to state go watch him be in that atmosphere uh, I can't think it's, I can't I have to think it's anything but I mean it's certainly not bad for them to go experience that atmosphere and support Leland and no, now I mean, they want to get there if I have my wishes I want them all to use it as like you said energize them but use it as a motivator to say, look, we can do this. Our team can do this. Your teammates did. And, you know, now you just got to keep working with them and then you'll be even closer next time. And don't look at it as a what if and make it into I can. Yeah, exactly. Well, again, congratulations, Leland Evans. It was an honor to, to follow you this year, and, and we'll be there with you next year as well. And uh, we wish you the best of luck in the off season. And, um, and uh, I certainly uh, fully expect that we'll see Leland back on the mats at Wells Fargo Arena next year. Hopefully he brings a couple teammates with him as well. Let's talk about the Little Hawkeye Conference now, uh, postseason. And, man, we were well represented at state. Uh, Oski had one. Qualifier DCG sent five. Grinnell sent two. Indianola had six. Newton sent a couple. Norwalk qualified nine wrestlers for state. And uh, one, two, three, four, five place winners for, for Norwalk. But I, in total, I and count. And Pella had one. And Pella had one, too. We all had at least one, right? That's right. Um, and so by my count, unless I'm missing some, I count 12 medals earned by little Hawkeye conference wrestlers at this tournament. That that's impressive. Yeah, that's great for our conference. Um, I didn't break that down as far as you did. I looked at finals and there was either a conference opponent or a district opponent that we came out of in each, almost in each, or maybe that was place winners trying to look at place winners in each weight. So it was, it was place winners, not just finals. <laughs> I think there's four finalists out of our conference and our district. And there was a couple champs. You know, Southeast Polk had one. Um, the Newton guy made finals at, was that Lenin, 220? Yeah, 220. So we had people like that. Uh, Indianola had at 113. And, you know, really good representation of where we're at. And we talk a lot of crap about, we, you know, we have a tough schedule or we have tough opponents. But it's not a lie. We can back it up with numbers. Yeah, you know? yeah. We have that many place winners coming out of a conference of only seven teams. And so that's not too bad for us to go in. And, you know, just showcase maybe it took some of our guys that didn't make it, but it doesn't mean it was a weak area or weak weight. Right. All right. Well, moving forward now, um, obviously, maybe you take just a little time to relax and, and sit back and, and get back to reality after uh, the state wrestling tournament is over. But um, what what is your game plan for the off season to, to come back strong, you know, next November? Well, taking it taking it easy is 
yes and no. I mean, the reality is those, all those guys that are on those award stands, they don't take it easy. You know, I've said it every year I've ever coached or 15 years, being involved in some type of level of if you want to get to that stage, you got to do the little bit extra. You know, sometimes it's not just wrestling. You know, do track, do golf, but you got to balance out, find a practice, make sure you're lifting, make sure you're doing other things. It's not good enough just to show up in November and say, hi, and then, yeah, we'll work with you. But, you know, if you want to be there, you got to understand that. Mm -hmm. All those guys put in a ton of more hours to make it that extra. Yeah. I don't know if you saw, did you see Seabolt's picture? I did not. Oh, how many yeah. they had? Yeah, they had, I think, 10, 10 finalists or something just yeah. in 3A. And now, you know, how much, do they, much time do they spend at each club? I don't know. But when you find ways to get extra in, that's what we're talking about. Yep. You know, I'm, our off season wise, you know, we'll try to have some open rooms. Um, there's some things nearby, not necessarily as big as what those other schools have to offer. Um, I know I've talked to some of our conference coaches before about things in our area and how far away we got to go. We're kind of in a, it, we don't have that super club nearby. There's stuff around if we look for it. We need to we need yeah. to make sure kids are looking for it. Absolutely, and 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 you know at the youth youth level, the, the Oskaloosa Youth Wrestling Club is growing and uh, uh, and and becoming more successful uh, year by year. So that's a great thing. Every every wrestler I interviewed, uh, I asked about or not everyone, but most of them, I asked them about their their career of wrestling, if you will, way back to youth. And every one of them uh, went through. I, I think the the latest I had a wrestler tell me they started was fourth grade. Um, yeah. most of them started preschool, kindergarten, whatever. Uh, but I'll, everybody I asked, you know, what advice do you give to the young kids? And it was overwhelming. They all said pretty much the same thing. Just put your time in, uh, you know, don't, don't overdo it. Don't burn yourself out, but put, put your time in study, listen to what your coaches say. I mean, that was basically the overwhelming answer from everybody. Right. And it, that's like always the great thing to say is you don't have to overdo it, but you do have to do something, you know, yeah. those guys, some of them wrestling since they were in kindergarten, but they had that goal, and you've, as a parent, help them realize what it takes and just stay positive with them, saying, hey, if you really want to do this, we got to go here for practice time. And then if it's baseball season, do baseball, but still you know, keep a little, little eye on what's going on so you don't get too far off. I mean, that's what I'm talking about, where it doesn't have to be a 365 just wrestling. Absolutely. But you do have to do a little. Yeah. Well, I mean, and when you look at – these other programs that shine every single year. Look at the three A top three teams: Waverly, Shell Rock, Southeast Polk, Fort, uh, Southeast Polk, Fort Dodge. I can't remember any time in the recent past that it wasn't those three in the top three. I mean, they are the three powerhouse programs. Uh, West Des Moines Valley, you could throw in there. They've been a little down the last couple of years, but uh, they're another one up there. But you know, I mean. And then you look at, like, Lisbon and 1A. I mean, they had five finalists. Uh, Don Bosco had tons of guys in the final. Southeast Polk had several. Waverly Shellrock. You know, it, it's not going to happen overnight, but how nice would it be to have five guys or more in the finals? Oh, right. Well, success breeds success, right? Yeah. I mean, you get somebody rolling, and you know, we can use Leland as much as we can, especially as a junior coming back and his practice partners. But then we keep pushing him. If we're pushing him, you're pushing yourself. Other people – will hopefully copy you so I have a different group of people pushing each other so they don't look bad because you're going, you know, just everything steps up a notch the more you can kind of kind of have success. So it it's not easy. It's not overnight. You know, the kids club's growing, but we got a lot of guys on our team that they're taking that risk coming out for us and they haven't been out when they were little. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have some great progress. I mean, last year looking at numbers on our team, everything was looking, I mean, improvement whether it's a winning percentage or if it was wins in general or if it was less losses you know that's what I'm that's what I'm saying winning percentage everything is, was going up we have this year's stats before state there's we had I mean tons of like 30 more pins than we did last year just pins in general we had more team wins we had more team points we had almost every stat had increased over the past couple of years and then you know looking back the last time that we didn't win some of the categories is when we had five state qualifiers and three of those guys are state place winners, and one of them placed as a junior and not as a senior. It's like, that was a really good group. So that's the only time that, that this group right here that we had, that we only have one state qualifier, but our team had gotten so much better. Now, mm -hmm. we have to push them more and more to catch up to those guys that have been wrestling for their whole lives. And so that's the hard part, you know, keeping kids out, 
getting him to see that long term. And we got a good group of freshmen sophomores right now that are helping roll that over. And yeah, you know, we'll we'll let you know in a couple of years how well it turns out. But we're we're really happy with what we see. We want to get more kids down to that state tournament and yep. let well, them enjoy it. And, and we'll talk more about this later in, in a season recap. But uh, I know, and I'm sure you know, I mean, there's some pretty good eighth graders coming up too. These are guys that, that I was involved with in the youth club because my son is that age when he used to wrestle. And so I, I know a lot of those eighth grade wrestlers pretty well. And I think we got some pretty good kids coming up from the middle school level too that are going to impact our program in the coming years so chase uh thanks for coming in today yeah. and uh i uh, appreciate it again we'll get you back here soon and we'll kind of look back and recap the entire season but um a lot of success enjoyed by oscalus wrestling this year capped off with a state qualifier in leland evans and uh, again congratulations leland on uh on accomplishing that that feat and uh we'll look forward to more next year all right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back to uh, wrap up this edition of Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V. Straight ahead. High V's Choice Reserve and Prime Reserve Beef, arguably the best beef in America. Their quality and flavor are undisputable, undeniable. Let's get ready to be unstoppable. is more than a bundle it's more than a combo deal it's not just stuff this is your home your car and you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance state farm agents get it it's why they're here call state farm agent wendell campbell at 641-673-4462 Oskaloosa High V here on the Indians Network as we get ready to uh, wrap up this week's edition. Um, again, just a little more wrestling notes here. Uh, first off, uh, Coach Weber informed me, I hadn't seen it yet, but I appreciate him letting me know. Uh, Drew Sams, former Oskaloosa wrestler, of course, uh, a four time state qualifier and uh, earned a medal as a junior. Uh, he, for the third straight year, has qualified for the NAIA Nationals. So, congratulations to Drew Sams. He's just missed. Uh, uh, top eight in all American the previous two years. Hopefully, this is the year Drew Sams gets it done. So, uh, keep a close watch on that, wrestling fans. Drew Sams grand uh, at Graceland, and uh, he's going back to the NAIA national tournament. Congratulations, Drew. Some other uh, quick things from the uh, state wrestling tournament. Just running through some numbers uh, with our little hockey conference teams. So uh, again, we talked about Norwalk uh, qualified nine wrestlers. They they took home five. Place winners, a, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, and two eighth places. Newton had two place winners, including a, a guy in the finals uh, who lost. Gage Linehan at 220 was a runner up. Indianola had a great tournament. They took six qualifiers and uh, bring home two medals with Downey and Bonanno, second place and fifth place. Uh, Grinnell, Brock Beck, Cameron Stevenson uh, both placed fourth and seventh, respectively. DCG had a place winner at uh, 132 and fifth place. So, and then, like I said, Pella had a qualifier. Oskaloosa had a qualifier. Uh, didn't bring home medals, but congratulations there. Um, again, Centerville, Eddieville, Blakesburg, Fremont, great tournament. Albia took a couple to state. Uh, Sheraton had a couple. North Mahaska had one. PCM had a couple place winners. So, I mean, the area did very, very well. Pekin qualified one. Sigourney Kyoto qualified two, brought home one medal. So, just great representation from our uh, local area on the mats at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. And uh, we look forward to more uh, in the future, of course. Don Bosco, 1A champion, Osage 2A, and Waverly Shell Rock 3A. So, Again, uh, great time at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines this past week. Thanks to Thunder Country uh, for all the coverage that they bring to all the wrestling fans, and uh, I was honored and pleased to be a part of that uh, with the Thunder Country crew this past week. You want to go back and relive and listen to any of it? You can do it. Go to uh, KIICradio.com and uh, search podcasts. You'll find it there, all of the sessions. Um, you can also get it on the Thunderbolt app. So, yeah, go back and uh, check out the fun we had this past week at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. All right, I want to thank our coaches for coming in this week uh, on the program. Big thanks to uh, Nick Eversmeyer. He's uh, one of the assistants on the Oskaloosa Boys Basketball Program. Good luck to the boys on Monday when they host Carlisle. 
Again, we'll have that right here on the Indians Network. Pre-game at 6.40, tip-off at 7. Thanks to J.C. White, Oskaloosa girls coach, and, of course, Chase Weber, the Oskaloosa wrestling coach. We'll be back for another edition next week right here on the Indians Network, presented by Craig Ford. Until then, thanks to our sponsors, Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa hy V. am Jamie Brockman. For all of us at the Indians Network, a partnership with MCG, Oski News, and Thunder Country KIIC. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Go Indians!